Ariana with Talking Technique. This is episode three, and today I would like to answer a question. Brandon was asking a few weeks ago about how, uh, about some exercises or my approach to playing big jumps that are occurring all over the neck. Let's say you're playing a unison line with a horn player or a piano. Uh, what are some, some exercises to help you get really fit in those kind of jumps all over the fretboard? And it's a great question and it's a really big topic. I think uh, there's lots of ways to answer them. So I was thinking about how I can distill some things down for you and give you something useful to, um, to practice with. So some prerequisites for being able to play jumps are that, for example, you know where the notes are, that you have a consistent fingering and that you have a feel for the positions on the bass. Lots of ways to tackle that. I learned uh, a system that um, relies on a five different patterns, and you can five or seven is typically um, uh, how it's taught. And it's a very powerful way to always know where you are on the fretboard. So there's lots to say about that. But one thing that I was thinking about might make sense in this format to talk about is uh, some tricks that we learned from upright bass players. Upright bass players are obviously concerned with intonation a lot, so they want to make sure that their jumps are clean and targeted, and they have some great exercises for that sort of thing, and we can borrow them on the electric. And here are just a few ideas for you. So, for example, when here's, here's the basic exercise setup, and I am assuming that you're saying I have to do these jumps without looking at my... Um, fretboard maybe that wasn't meant that way i don't know but i'm just going to treat the question as if it if, as if you were saying well how do i do that without looking okay so one one idea for that is to start let's say we're starting on c and then we're going one two and then i'm going to go back down to one and i'm going to scoot my second finger exactly where my first finger just was i'm going to play that note again and then i'm going to go down so this is sort of like the starting version, okay? So I can do this. I'm going to do it again. This is the starting version. So one, two, and I'm going to feel where the one was, put the two where the one was, and I'm going to go down. Okay, so one more time. One, two, cheeto note, cheeto note, one down. I'm going to say cheeto note now because step two is this. I'm going to skip the cheeto note. I'm just going to go from here directly to here. So I'm feeling that my second finger is gonna go where my first finger just was, okay? So the execution of step two would be one, two, scoot down to one, okay? Now, step three would be that I leave out even more stuff, that I just go from two to one, two to one, two to one. So again, step one, bunch of cheetah notes, Less cheetah notes, and then I just go from two to one. And now I can do that, of course, with bigger jumps. That would be it with the third finger, with the cheetah notes, without the cheetah note. Just the first note is basically the cheetah note, right? And then from here to here. And I can exactly feel, and I like to play very close to my string so I can exactly feel where that finger is sort of like putting the mental note where I will be where I would be if I played that note <laughs> so and then of course you can do it with with the uh, fourth finger as well so in this case you would be doing this and then you go C E flat A C E flat cheetah note A or cheetah position and then you go directly without any cheetah notes but I'm very aware and I can actually feel that C right here it's like a mental bookmark you know so that's an interesting exercise and then to step it up it's not a huge jump but it's a jump and um, it's a systematic way of sort of approaching it now one way you can make this a little tougher is to flip-flop the fingers just because, okay, just because it's a good exercise and it helps you get this grid under your mental, under your muscle, muscle memory. So what I mean by flip-flopping the fingers is at first I did this, right? One, two, and then I scoot it down, right? 
Now I'm going to flip flop the fingers. I'm going to go from the one to the same note, but I'm just going to use the other two fingers. So again, at first I was using two going down to the one, having my mental bookmark right in between here. Now I'm just going to flip flop the fingers. I'm going to go from one to two. With that same sort of idea in mind, what I'm doing, I'm jumping over my cheetah note, and then I can do that with these two. Looks like this. And then, of course, I can do it with, you know, instead of going from the E flat to the A, there's a whole tritone. I'm going here. It doesn't make much sense to go to the pinky finger down there. But it makes sense because you're getting those distances under your belt. Um, an exercise that is also always a really good one to not only cement where the notes are, but also to cement how notes reoccur between different strings. I call it the note finder. I learned it in at the University of um, Vienna in Austria. And I sat down after my teacher gave me the whole idea of this thing. I sat down and I went, wait a minute. In between each string, there's only a difference of five and seven frets. So what I mean by that, this is the exercise in a nutshell. So you go from, you play each note. And for the purpose of this exercise in this setup, I stay below the double dots. So don't be concerned with anything that's higher up there. But um, I'm going to play my G on every single string. It won't be the same G. It might be different octaves. Depends on the notes. Depends on, you know, where where we are, which note we're using. But <coughs> so I can play a G on every single string. Okay. And I, you know, if you think about it, they are offset either by five frets, you know, open string to the next string is five frets, five to zero or seven. So it depends on the uh, which direction you're going. So this is an E, this is an E, seventh fret to zero, and this is a, an A, that's the fifth fret, and this is an A, and that's zero also. So uh, the idea being that in between those two, it's always either five or seven frets. It's either when I go up, it's plus seven minus five, just quickly demonstrate that. So this is the third fret, right? Plus seven, I can't do minus five, puts me below zero. So I'm going to use plus seven. Plus seven puts me up here. It's the tenth fret. Minus five. If I do plus seven, I'm going to end up over the double dots. I'm going to end up on a G, but I'm going to be higher than the double dots. I don't want to do that. So now on the tenth fret, I'm going to go down five frets. So minus five ends up here. And then here I can do both. It's, that's why I picked G, G to show this, because I can do either minus five. G minus five is G, or I mean, five minus five is zero, five minus five is zero, or five plus seven is 12. It's also a G. So if I have the distance of five or seven frets under my belt, then I can do this blind without looking. You can't look at the screen because there's a mirror image of me that really confuses me. But okay. you get the idea. So, and you know, and you want to get it up in tempo and, and uh, be able to find your notes, practice them like that. Um, so that would be one idea, the note finder. I like to practice things in a creative fashion. And I can do that with the note finder as well. So again, the assignment is stay underneath the double dots, go string by string, E string, A string, D string, G string. And then backwards, D, A, and E. I don't even bother doubling up on top because that gives me this extra moment to think about it. And I'd rather not have that and use the time to actually do it. So for the next one, um, you can make the goal to be one bar each or you can make it two bars, whatever you want before you switch. So here's like a very simple version of this, just with the root.
gives you some ideas for jumps. Today's tip is a little bit related to the question about jumps, and it is about where to position the music stand. Now, this is something I sometimes see. So the music stand will be over here, and the player is positioned this way. Now, first of all, when you do that, you kind of really have to crane your neck, whether you're standing or sitting, but you kinda, I kind of would have to do this. And then people do this. They go back and forth all the time to see the fretboard and to see the music. So I recommend what you do is you put the music stand, you point the bass towards the music, you put the music stand a little bit below that, and you make it so that only your eyes jump back and forth between your bass and between the music. That way you're right there, you're not losing time going this way and that way. It's easier to bookmark where you are in the music. You don't have to, um, you know, keep focusing to find your place that much because you're just a tiny bit off. You can almost see it out of your peripheral vision. And the other tip is if you really practice the position playing, if you practice one finger per fret, if you're conscious about fingering, then you will have a much, much easier time not losing your place because you just feel and know where the notes are and how they relate to each other. So it makes reading much easier. All right, that was today's episode. Please keep the questions coming. There were a couple of other great ones. I hope to get to them in the next episodes. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Let me know how it's going for you. Again, my name is Ariana Cap. You can find my blog at arispaceblog.com and my book, Music Theory for the Bass Player, on Amazon. And I have class out on True Fire. Please check that out as well. It actually deals with some of that position playing. So if that's interesting to you, then please check that out as well. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, No Travel. I got the No Travel t-shirt on, folks. That's how you're cool. <laughs> All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>